I'm a member of the open source team, actually, and I'm talking today about a tool uh, mostly used for open sources so far called Kiwi. It's for creating system images. So, yeah, what is Kiwi? I also gave a short explanation. First of all, it's a command line tool, so it's fully into promo CDs or DVDs uh, that are fully run, runnable without installation on your system. Um, in the meanwhile, it's also possible to create the uh, installation repositories, so the regular SUL DVDs uh, with it. And Maybe you've heard of the SUSE Studio. This is an appliance creation tool, web-based. Uh, a colleague of mine will later have a talk about it. And yeah, it's the backend for it. And there's also a Yast, maybe you know Yast or a system configuration tool. Uh, a Yast uh, graphical user interface for it uh, available so you can, if you don't want to use command line tools, you can uh, have a graphical version of it. So, what is an image? It's not like this one. It's more or less these kind of images. Kiwi supports creation of all these types of system images. I also mentioned, already mentioned the uh, live CD or DVD. Um, same from booting from USB sticks or USB hard drives. You can also have an OEM hard disk image means uh, you can have a, a simply a, a big hard disk image to simply DD on a hard drive and you can mount it to a computer and everything will be running. Same for network bootable images, PXE for example, virtual uh, machine images like QEMU and VMware are supported also for Zen and this EC2 Amazon stuff. So what are use, how is it how is in, uh, how are these images useful for you maybe? For example, if you want to distribute uh, new software, maybe you have an open source project or even a proprietary project running on Linux, so you can create a for example DVD with your software already installed and pre-configured, simply distributed and your customers or your users can evaluate your software. You can actually pre-configure everything so it's running out of the box. You can create rescue systems, for example, a USB stick where you can boot from to restore your maybe backups from elsewhere. And, yeah, as I already mentioned, um, to pre-install a Linux system on many machines. For example, if you're a system administrator and have a, a computer pool, maybe at a university with 20 or 30 machines, all the same, or maybe even not the same, simply DD an image on it and we have a running system. So, I will sh show you on a short example how to use Kiwi. It basically needs only three steps till you have um, your image ready. First of all, you have to create a description, means a configuration file uh, where you describe what you want to have on your image. Then you run Kiwi to prepare the file system tree. So it's more or less the same uh, as your running system. And the step three is create the image in the type I described before. So if you want to have a ISO or hard disk image or whatever. And you don't have, uh, if you want to have more than one image type, you only have to prepare it once. So you can create more images from it. So, short explanation about the first step. It's more or less simply a directory where we put all the stuff uh, 
you need for your uh, image in it. And this is basically an XML file that uh, contains, for example, a package list and uh, maybe some services you need for your image. And some optionals, optional stuff. Uh, you can manu do manipulations of the, your image on different stages during the, during the build process, I will explain. Uh, it can also contain simply files that you want to have on the image and they maybe are not packaged into a RPM package or Debian package, for example. Um, there are also files that you may have, maybe do not have in your running system but only in the, in the distribution media. For example, on an on a installation CD, you have licensing files or something in the root tree but you will not have them um, in the system you have running afterwards. And in the OpenSUSE case, for this yes to first boot configuration, uh, if you will use this yes to yes to first boot tool to uh, do configurations on the running system on the first boot. So if you customize booting your image, then you have maybe have different audio hardware than you have, just to first boot will do that for you. So usually it's a bit boring to show huge configuration files in a presentation. However, for this example uh, that is by the way included in the documentation of uh, Kiwi, not only this one, there are many different use cases included. It only needs about 40 lines of description to have a OpenSUSE live ISO image prepared. And these are basically these 40 lines. And everything is contained in an image container and for example you have uh, some meta description for it. The author is the original author of uh, Kiwi's Michael Schäfer. I'm doing the presentation on this one. Um, Describe your image, maybe give it a name, and yeah, you also can have a, a, a longer explanation for it. It's not included here. Then you have, of course, preferences of your system. So different image types have different uh, settings. So in this case, we only have the image type ISO included. So that, that is the already prepared and in Kiwi included uh, boot image. You can give it a version. Um, you can use different package managers. In this case, we are using the SUSE tool Zipper to install all the RPM packages. You can also use Smart for that. That supports, as you maybe know, also non-RPM distributions, or at least uh, Debian. Um, some other configurations, for example, the key table to make it fit for the uh, keyboard you expect to use it, to be using. Uh, you can define users. In this case, we only have a root user. You can prepare the password for this user in an encrypted, uh, hashed way. You can, of course, also have a usual, as regular users. Pre-configured. Um, the most differences between all these images will be uh, the software that is installed on them. So we have, uh, first of all, you have to define a system repository where all your program packages are stored before the installation. In this case, we are using uh, the this is a shortcut for open SUSE, for the OpenSUSE installation repositories online. It's basically an installation over HTTP that short, this OpenSUSE part only shortens the URL a bit. And as you can see, we have the Elevator 2 repository where uh, the, all the packages for the installation of the image will be. Uh, okay. You can. Also use local file systems, maybe have a local DVD with all the RPMs on it, or you have a 
copied down this, downloaded already this tree. There's also file and uh, local directories actually. Uh, well, the next part is you select the packages you want to install, and there are basically three types of, well, yeah, in this case, I have only two types of packages. This is a pattern. This is something that is specifically for open source. That is because it's, uh, uh, that's the reason why it is prefixed by open source. Um, we have so-called patterns, and the default pattern means that is the minimal system you need to have a running open source. So it's a, actually a collection of packages. And you can select additional packages. For example, this package win, if you want to have an editor on this. And if you want to have, you can uh, manipulate where the packages are, to be, where you need them. For example, in this case, uh, you need it in the, in the boot system because it's the boot splash branding, so uh, that your image is starting already with an uh, open source uh, graphics. So that's all for the config XML file. There are also some shell scripts. In this case, you only need this config sh that does, uh, after all the packages are installed in this change root environment, it is actually used by change root. Um, you need a script, you can do anything you can do in a shell script, so you can manipulate uh, files. You can, for example, in this case, I'm talking about this uh, open source image, there are some services enabled. Uh, the run level uh, that is used for booting up, so it boots in this case up to a run level 3 only, I think, because it's an ASIC system. And also a SUSE specific, specific part uh, to be running open SUSE config to do the system configuration with it. This is fully configurable, so if you don't want to use the SUSE system, don't run open SUSE, uh, SUSE config, for example. <coughs> so after we created the configuration for our system, um, the actual file system tree is built up, and this is what, uh, how, or when TV appears first in this thing. You only need these two parameters. Prepare means the prepare, we are calling it in the prepare spec, uh, step. Yeah, so, uh, the third step is a different parameter. Um, you need a directory for that, where to store all the packages. Not the packages, where to store the image. And, um, oh, sorry, mix it up. Uh, here's the description we have we we prepared uh, before, and the root is, of course, the root image there to put all the data. And this call is running for a while, and because it's created a full root tree, this is usually uh, where you can also, after it is finally prepared, can change router and do manipulations in it. And uh, this root tree is then uh, the base for the next step I will show. If you want to create more than one image type, not only a ESO image, maybe also a USB image, then this step you have to be done only once. Then you have this basically your setup and create more uh, images afterwards. Yeah. So the third, st third step create the image called Creepy Create with the root path from the call before. The type you want to have because you can, of course, configure more than one type, as I already told in the description file. In this case, we want the ESO uh, image head and the destination directory where to put this ESO image. 
And after that, it also takes a while. You have a ready image um, that you can use. And you can, for example, uh, check it first uh, with VMware or QM if you have an ESA image, for example. And your, your pre-configured image is ready. It's actually as easy as I described it here. So, uh, so far we were also on, only talking about uh, the SUSE way, as, um, because Kiwi is uh, so far prepared only for open SUSE, but it is, as I can show you here, um, As I already said, uh, not, not only super is usable, but only smart. So you can, uh, so far, already build up the file system tree with, for example, Fedora or Debian packages. And because the design is quite independent, all the distribution-specific stuff is stored into special functions that are in the moment uh, prefixed by, uh, the name of them is prefixed by SUSE or OpenSUSE. So to en enhance uh, Kiwi for really do Fedora or Debian or whatever uh, images is uh, create modules with the appropriate prefix uh, to do mostly the bootloader configuration that is Definitely different than uh, SUSE. For example, also initRT, but it's, it's most, mostly the boot stuff is different in di different distributions. <coughs> and of course, the system configuration, because uh, Yast is usually not available on other distributions. Yeah, and after these steps are done, I think it should be easy to do uh, these other distribution images with it. And so I can only say, please contribute if you are interested in building system images and you may be familiar with other distributions. If you are able to program in Perl, then you will, be, you will have it easy because Kiwi is completely written in Perl. Only some parts are, of course, shell scripts. And it is open source and free software because it's licensed uh, with GPL. And uh, to contribute, you can simply check out it on the Git repository on Dalios DE. So, if you want to find out more about TV, uh, there are two websites the project webpage on Dalios DE and of course in the OpenSUSE wiki where you can find uh, some more use cases. There are also already people that uh, did some projects with it. They mostly have done uh, descriptions of what they did and uh, wrote it down in the, key, in the wiki. We'll find more examples and a quite good documentation. Quite, uh, I have it printed here. That's a Kiwi cookbook where you can uh, quite easily create some types of images uh, step by step explained. And if you want to install it via RPM, you can find them in the OpenSUSE build service in the project virtualization appliances. Yeah, and I think I was quite fast, so I already I'm um, finished with my talk. So if you have questions, just ask them now. So at the moment, uh, only OpenSUSE is fully supported. Yeah, mm. but it is, of course, it is designed platform independent or distribution mm. independent. Mm. So basically, you only need Everything's to... Everything's possible yeah. for the future. Huh? Yeah, there. Yeah, if that is only the specific parts, I and Marcos are not aware of with that uh, are different between these different distributions. I don't know how to set up um, 
uh, red hat system, for example. Mm -hmm. So if you are able to do that, you can implement it, and it should be easy to do that. Yeah. Uh, I think the main problem is that the other distributions already have uh, their own infrastructure set up for things like that. The Debian has its tools for building live CDs and even installation CDs or DVDs or other images. Uh, we got the same in Fedora, so there's no need, we real need to adapt a tool from another distribution which maybe don't fit enough or you have to uh, um, put quite a, a lot of effort into it uh, to allow builds on other distributions. Um, so the question is, does it have a real benefit in comparison with the tools other distributions already had for quite a while, even before Kiwi? Uh, has been started. <coughs> the only benefit I personally see is uh, the usage of SUSE Studio to build other distributions because this is a unique project. This other dis I don't know a distribution who already has a similar infrastructure. It's really cool. Um, and uh, if you could manage to implement uh, a build system for other distributions out of Studio, uh, this would be uh, a great effort for, for everyone. So, so the, basically, to do that, it would be necessary to make it possible to create images yeah, from other. Course. Because in the build service, we already are able to build packages, actually, for other distributions. <coughs> and uh, since it is quite based on the build service... Yeah, but I've tried to build Fedora packages with, build, uh, build, with the OpenSUSE build service. And it's not quite usable as the uh, tools we use within our distribution, so... So basically you need a spec file. Maybe we should simply come together and sit down for a while and yeah. talk about it. And uh, maybe we'll find a way uh, uh, to improve it to make this happen. I think the, the, the main thing that differentiates Kiwi from all the other distribution scripts that are there to build live CDs is that it is not distribution specific. So you have a tool that everybody yeah. can use. Of course, it would need adoption. Yeah, in theory, but you have to put uh, quite a lot of effort into it to make it happen, that it uh, will be able to build other distributions. Um, Why? I'm not sure how hard it will be to implement, for example. I mean, uh, what don't you think it's too hard, because uh, you, you have these, uh, as you already mentioned, you, there are scripts doing Fedora images, for example. And I think you're more or less doing the same. So we could snip out some the specific parts and plug it into Kiwi somehow. One just, just so, hmm? yeah. yeah. I see a few minutes, um, advantage. No matter if it's Kiwi or something else, if you have one description and yeah, you just course. rerun it for and you get it for Yeah, all but uh, the problem <laughs> is in history because yeah, every distribution they already had their tools I and agree. nobody came together and uh, yeah. I definitely like the approach to keep it different by design. Definitely. Uh, uh, the same example is Mirrorbrain. It's open by design. It's a cool project. <coughs> but it's not yeah. only just about building uh, distribution images. I know from a customer um, who wants to go this way for pulling his appliance, adding his own code to a distribution. And right now he runs on different uh, generations on SUSE. He wants to just package his application and all this stuff for different appliances and things like that, but the big idea on, on them is also they want to have one description for all their setup and their hardware drivers, a lot of stuff involved and client server stuff and things like that. And if they don't want to like, or if a customer asks, oh, we don't want to like this box running SUSE Linux or whatever, then they just replace the part, oh, take this distribution, we make that, and that didn't happen yet, but it, at least it works with different versions of SUSE Linux. Okay. It would be really great if I, now that more and more digitalization is coming, maybe it's another topic. If someone asks, I have to have this appliance for my system administration stuff, running Fedora, Debian based, whatever, uh, then it would be much easier to package all the stuff I want to ship and sell, uh, that flavor and this flavor and things like that, and having a generic tool which do, does all of this would be really nice. And since it's scripted, I haven't looked. I have looked a little bit into it and didn't try yet to adjust these things, just fix other ones. And should be doable. Uh, so, uh, one question about the framework. Is um, the studio part, is it already open sourced now or uh, is it still internal 
It is available, but I think it's not really open source, the studio part. Okay, but you're planning to make it open source, or does Novel plan to make it open source? Do you know anything? That's maybe you can ask in the build service talk later, because okay. I'm not involved in the build service, actually. actually. Mm -hmm. and in the build service, and then in the studio talk later. Oh, I'm not involved in the studio team. Yeah. You mentioned uh, OpenSUSE. Can I also use it for Slash and Slash? Yeah, yeah, definitely, because it's basically the same. You only have to define the repository for the uh, SLES packages, and the configuration is nearly uh, the same. They're just cheap OpenSUSE knockoffs. Yeah. Some people are uh, like it. Yeah. Um, do you know of real world uses of Kiwi? What are people doing with it? On the uh, uh, in the wiki, there are some uh, use cases. Uh, people actually using it. Um, yeah, to be the uh, Suzy Studio, for example, uh, ships an appliance uh, system image to uh, do in-house uh, that customers can do in-house image creation with it. So it is basically its own customer. <laughs> yeah. So what about the, uh, if you concentrate on SUSE, what about the deep-wend or weak-wend process? Is it already implemented in Kiwi right now? Because I know we talked about for a year or so back, um, because it's not allowed to rebuild a SUSE-based uh, distribution and uh, spread it if it still contains the SUSE signs. Is it already in Kiwi? I'm not sure about that. Well, the, yeah. Yeah. There, there is a simple, I mean, that's uh, rights or uh, law stuff. So there's a simple way of just requesting permissions to distribute oh, okay. that Can stuff. And there's a tool called Rembrandt, yeah, which is. Yeah, but typically the tool has also all the branded stuff split yeah. out yeah. packages. So you can yeah. see so that. Yeah, you yeah. yeah. simply the choice not to install these packages that are branded. It's nothing uh, related it's to Kiwi. From, from another build service source or something like that. I guess you can split that, right? Uh, oh, you have to, uh, to set up your own build service source from which you build, which only contains packages <coughs> being rebranded or something like that? You, you simply don't have to use... To, uh, they are, all the branded packages are separate packages. Yeah, of course, but they are dependencies from other packages. I, I don't uh, think that you can simply remove them. Oh, you can. I think. Oh, okay. So, you yeah. can. There is this, this, the main package, then is the dash branding, dash upstream, that contains the upstream branding, then there's dash open SUSE and dash slash or whatever. That is, for example, this um, food splash branding package that is included here separately. That's the reason why it is there. Yeah, it. I did not describe that. You can also create the, uh, or actually the, eleven, uh, dot three images that will be released in I think three months or something like that will be created with uh, Kiwi. So installation sources are also possible in the meanwhile. Actually, there's one was already. Actually, ah, okay. It's only less eleven sp one that is currently. Yeah, okay, doesn't. Yeah, it works. And it's actually the part I am working on. <coughs> Do you ship this XML configuration files as example? I don't think yeah. they are included here. They are, they are included in user share doc packages key. Oh. Uh, they are, I don't think I have them in this computer, but uh, even 11.1 to, no, 11.0 to 2. And not only live ISO images, also live USB sticks, and a lot of configuration is there. But and for the installation uh, images, too? Yeah. Not for the installation yeah. images, only for the live images. Exactly. Yeah. 
can check out the installation description from the web server. Ah, okay. So okay. Yeah. And how to build them is described perfectly in the, in the documentation. I, I, I'm really happy about this documentation, I think. You have written it, I guess. Uh. No, it's written by the original author, Markus Schäfer. Yeah. So, thanks a lot. If you are interested in use the web pages, they are really useful, actually. So, thanks.